Whoa, my hair looks so dark and I love it. Hey guys, it's Sarah Jane, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a writing Q&A video, aka writing episode one. So I have been working on my novel ever since 2013. I started my channel in 2014 and as of yet, I have never done a writing Q&A video. And recently I watched Ben from Benjamin of Times upload his writing Q&A and I was like, just get on with it Sarah Jane, just get on with it. So before I jump into the questions, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what my novel is actually about. So what I can tell you about my story is that it is an adult urban fantasy series that plays with the idea that fairy tales, as in the original dark gruesome fairy tales, are actually a part of our history and they were never stories at all. Every fairy tale contains a grain of truth and the realm of the Fae is hidden from us. Yes, it's about Fae. Of course it's about Fae. So the realm of the Fae is hidden from us because there was a great war that broke out and the Fae and the human world had to be separated. So the world was divided and over time humans forgot the truth. Little pieces of the world have remained in our history. There's little fragments that bleed through, through myths, through legends and the reality is that actually the Fae and the humans used to coexist. And the fate of the world rests on the shoulders of an argumentative, aggressive, mean pickpocket who doesn't want to help anyone. So the first question that I have is actually from Ben from Benjamin of Tomes and he says what genre is it and your inspirations? So the genre is urban fantasy but I would say that it kind of merges into high fantasy as well because it's not so much there's a world within our own, it's that there's a world that's literally colliding into our own. So I would kind of describe it as urban fantasy with high fantasy frills. As far as inspiration goes, I would definitely say I was inspired by fairy tales, and I mean all fairy tales, from everything from the dark, gruesome originals to the Disney pretty fairy tales that we have today. I find it very, very interesting how something that was so dark and so twisted becomes something that little girls dress up as and they love their favourite princesses. I've always loved reading about Fae, that's something that I've always been passionate about, but equally I've always been really passionate about dark, twisted stuff and this story just basically puts all those things that I've ever loved together and the story was born. The next question is from Amy and she said, are you more of a plot driven or character driven writer? I'm definitely more of a character driven writer. I think for the first maybe two years of this process, my plot was actually quite weak. And even though I knew all three of my main characters like the back of my hand, I couldn't quite work out how they were gonna get from point A to point B to point C. And even though I could see scenes in my head as clear as day, I couldn't work out how to weave each plot element through. I couldn't work out how to lay the breadcrumbs for my story. So I'm definitely a character driven writer. And I think, I think you are generally m more one than the other. Something I learned from Lee Bardugo when I met her at her Six of Crows signing a few years back, she talked about laying the breadcrumbs and I realized it was so important. And now I feel like I'm a lot better at it, but I'm definitely, definitely more of a character driven writer. The next question is from Thelma and she says, do you have a critique partner? If yes, how did you find them? And who's your favorite character in your work in progress and why? So as far as critique partners go, I don't have a specific critique partner, but I am part of a group of friends who are very good at giving honest feedback to each other, which I think is very important. Luna, stop it. I can't play with you right now. I've got a friend from uni who's always been a writing based friend because I study script writing so we've always had that really good relationship where we can honestly critique each other's work. I've got friends from my local NaNoWriMo group who are like really good friends now so I don't have one critique partner but I have a few friends who I would trust 100% with my work to critique it so I'm very lucky. And the other question was who's your favourite character in your work in progress and why? And for that I'm definitely going to say Violet. I think for me personally I feel like, I feel like for a lot of fantasy stories the protagonist's tagline could often be I thought I was ordinary, I thought I was normal and then I found out that I dot 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 dot. And while there's a lot of stories out there that I love that have this theme, I'm not knocking it, for me personally I just had this thought one day of well what, what would happen if something you know the big the big kicking off plot point happens in a book and the protagonist just goes no I don't want to help you bugger off and that's how Violet was born that's how I created her in my mind I was like what if what if there was a character who wasn't emotionally well balanced what if she was 
you know, quite unstable? What if she was very unhappy? What if she was a pickpocket? What if she was aggressive? What kind of hero could she be? What if she's imperfect? What if she has her own demons? What happens then? And I absolutely love her because she's not a character who thought she was normal and then found out that she had to fight and had to find this inner strength and find her bravery. She's a character who would throw herself into the fire, but not because she's brave, not because she has someone to fight for, but because she literally has no respect for her own life. My main love for Violet is that in the beginning of the book she's not brave, she's reckless, and she has to go on a journey to learn that being brave is actually when you have something to lose, not when you just throw yourself aimlessly into the fire. She has a massive chip on her shoulder, she's very bitter, and she's a very fun character to write because of that. I like that she's imperfect, I like that she's a little bit broken, and without a doubt she is my most favourite character. I came up with her before I came up with anything, and I am so protective of her, I just absolutely adore her. The next question is from Peter, who's actually my friend, and he said, What do you eat, drink, and listen to while writing? Do you coordinate your stacks, beverages, and sounds to a single unified theme? No. When I'm writing, and it doesn't matter what I'm writing, I have one specific set of things that I go to, and that is a cup of tea, a big glass of water, and then a bowl of mints, which can be either mint imperials, Fox's Glacier mints, any kind of mint whatsoever. And I genuinely find writing harder without them, and I know that's ridiculous, but there's something about me having <laughs> a mint that just produces better writing, and it's probably quite likely a placebo, it's not a real thing, but it works for me, so yeah. Mints and tea. If you see I have mints and you see I have tea, then you know I'm going to be writing. In answer to the listening part of the question, I have a writing playlist which I go to on Spotify. It's my default. I can't write with other sounds going on. I can't write with background noise. I can't write with the television in the background and stuff like that. I can't write with music that has lyrics because I find that I actually start writing the lyrics down, which is very, very problematic. But I have a writing playlist on Spotify, which is a mixture of video game soundtracks, film soundtracks, TV soundtracks, that sort of thing, and instrumental music, and I absolutely love it. The next question is from Kayla, and she says, how do you organise your world building notes and such? So what I do is I have something called a book bible. Now when I was at uni studying script writing we had to create a TV series bible and in this book there would be characters, locations, backstory, all this sort of stuff that was a thick document that you could go to and look through to save yourself with like continuity and things like that. So I kept that with me and I adopted that for my novel. So it's a word document that has character profiles, it has locations, it has all these different things. The law of the world, the magic system, everything is within this one document and I'm always adding to it, I'm always changing things, but it's my go-to document and it keeps everything in one place and I find that it just helps me a lot. And the final question is from Ish and she probably didn't think I was going to read this out. Um, she said, when can I read it though? She probably didn't think I was going to read that question out, but the answer is, unfortunately, quite a while. I'm at a point now where I'm on the third draft, but I'm on probably my first solid draft. The first draft of everything is always a mess anyway. It's just you telling yourself the story, it's you shaping, making a mound of clay, and then you can shape it and perfect it later. But when I went on a writing retreat at the beginning of this year, my story was a complete mess and I literally spent an entire week taking it all apart, putting everything back together, rebuilding the building blocks, and that was great for my story, but it means that I've got a lot of work to do now. I'm happy with where I'm at with it because it's going to be a much better story because of it, but unfortunately I had to kind of start again, so it's going to be a while. I'm hoping to have this draft complete by the end of this year, so... Who knows? Who knows? It's going to be a while, but one day. One day. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you would like to see more writing videos from me, let me know in the comments what kind of writing videos you would like. I want to do a few vlog style videos, I want to do videos where I update you guys about where I'm at, maybe um, a day in the writing life. I don't write every day because of my chronic fatigue, but every now and again I'll have a full writing day and I could vlog that if that's something that you guys would be interested in. So if you have any ideas for writing based videos, let me know below. I had so much fun filming this video, I can't wait to share my writing journey more with you guys. Thank you so much for watching, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!